Hi, in this video, I'm looking at sketching the graphs of the exponential distribution function f of t equals lambda e to the negative lambda t for two different choices of lambda, 0.5 and 3, where t is greater than 0. And then we're going to look at what they look like and compare them and make, make a sort of statement about the shapes. So let's have a look at lambda equals 0 0.5, our first lambda, lambda equals 0 0.5. So that's going to give us the function f of t equals 0 0.5 e to the negative 0 0.5 t. So if I draw up an axis, so that way we can have a look at these graphs, and I'm going to have a t-axis, I'm going to have a y-axis, let's have 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 1, uh, 0 0.5, 1, I'll go a little bit closer, it's about even, 1.5, 2, 2.5, that'll do. So if I think about what's going on, if I start at t equals 0, and I look at this graph, if I put in t equals 0 up in my power, I'm going to have 0.5 times 0 made negative is still 0. So I'm going to have e to the 0, which is 1. So I'm just left with 0.5. So we actually have a y-intercept of 0 0.5. And then because my power is 0 0.5, it's quite a small number, it's going to be a rather sort of relaxed exponential curve coming downwards because it's negative. So we're going to have quite a relaxed exponential down towards that t-axis. It wouldn't cross, but my t-axis is a little bit crooked. And that would be the graph of f of t equals 0.5 e to the negative 0.5 t. So if we now go and have a look at the other graph, which is when lambda equals 3. So we're going to have f of t equals 3 e to the negative 3 t and if I draw in a similar set of axes so that way I can get a similar scale oops let's make something a little bit straighter so t so 0 0.5 1 1 1.5 2 2.5 3 0 0 0.5 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, oh, I can fit in 3. So, if we have a look at graphing this, we're going to have a y-intercept of 3, because if I have t equals 0, the exponential part cancels out, and I'm left with 3. So I'm going to have a y-intercept of 3 all the way up here. And because my power is a bit larger this time, it's actually going to be a much steeper curve down. So we exponential down a lot quicker. And in fact, it's probably going to be a bit quicker than that. So I'll make it even steeper. So that would be our two curves, both exponential. This one starting lower and getting a no, more of a shallow curve. This one starting higher and having a steeper curve. So if we compare these two shapes and think about what the exponential distribution means, we can start making a justification. For the lambda equals 0.5, we're a lot flatter, a lot shallower, and generally it's more sort of spaced out. Whereas the, when we have uh, lambda equals 3, we're a lot higher at the lower end, and we drop down really quickly to that exponential. And that's what we talk about when we come to comparing these two graphs. If I compare these two graphs for lambda equals 0 0.5, uh, the distribution is low and shallow, more spread out. For lambda equals three, the distribution is six times higher and steeper. So if we wanna make some sort of grand overall statement, we can basically say that the higher lambda is, the more skewed to the left, the graph of f of t, equals lambda e to the negative lambda t is, and the higher up, higher up the y-axis, it begins. So, for higher values, 
of lambda, there is a higher probability, because these are probability, of a lower value for t, a smaller t, because that's what these mean. These graphs basically say the height of them represents the prob likelihood, the probability of getting a t or a value of whatever is on the x-axis. So if I want to know what's the probability of getting around about a quarter or between zero and a half, let's say, then I would look at this area here and go, okay, that's likely to be my probability. But if I look up between two and two and a half, I'm going to read a low probability. But if we look at this graph, it's going between zero and a quarter. I've got a lot more area here, and I should have a lot lower area here. I didn't draw it very well, but that one should be much closer to the x-axis, the t-axis, as it is right there. So the higher lambda is, the more likely we're going to have a lower value. The smaller lambda is, the more spread out the values are. We're less likely to have lower values, get more of a chance of getting higher values.